Well, it wouldn't be a race of gentlemen unless I was waiting till the very last second to work on my car. So um, when the car was in Bonneville, it broke an axle. So uh, taking this thing apart, and I gotta find an axle. Um, I thought I had an axle here for it, but I don't. I have a 36 rear, and this is like a 42 to whatever, 48 Ford rear. So don't have what I need. Um, Al says he thinks he has one. So either way, I'm gonna pull it apart just to see what I'm working with, and shouldn't be that big of a deal to fix. Um, I don't know, worst case scenario, I'm gonna have to drive to find an axle, uh, but they're available, people have them, so I'm not too worried about it, but uh, it's still kind of the last minute. I would like to have this thing like totally buttoned up, but again, it's it's uh, par for the course. This is typically how I work on this thing. Don't touch it all year, week before the event, get into it, so. Started it yesterday, fired it up, runs good. Um, had a little fuel leak. Uh, the valve for the fuel injection, one of the O-rings in there was bad, so pop that apart and put a new O-ring in there. So it's not leaking, it's running. I need to put a battery in there and fix this axle. I should be good to go. Well, I had a feeling that there was a broken axle. Actually, I didn't just have a feeling. I kind of knew there was a broken axle, um, but I also thought like, eh, maybe it's just like a stripped axle key or something. Um, but just pulling this thing apart, that there is a broken axle. And if you know anything about early Ford rear ends, you'll see there that something is wrong because that right there is the axle. <laughs> so if you pull this out, there's a, uh, there's like a tapered shaft with a keyway in it, which goes into the brake drum and that's how all this works. Uh, it's not like on modern cars that are like splined. It's basically just a tapered shaft with a keyway. So um the keyways usually are what like strips out seeing an axle break like that is kind of crazy but uh i don't know it's uncontrollable power uncontrollable power of the al clark built go devil garage 286 inch flathead the hillborn fuel injection and a vertex magneto and all the cool stuff that al has done to this thing to give it all the power that it it has so um all jokes aside uh my friend butch has an axle so this is a later rear end this is like um what is it 40 i don't know 42 to 48 or whatever but i don't know if there's a 42 ford that uh, doesn't make sense but anyways basically the later of the axles um you can tell how there's like two this is like the spring hanger here um, the leaf spring normally goes across the back, like from this. And then on the later rear ends, they have like a, another boss in it. And that is for, um, what do you call it? Pan hard bar. So that's how you can tell. They are a little bit wider. I don't know what the width is. So that's why I'm kind of taking this thing apart before I go over to Bit Butch's. Al has a bunch of earlier rear ends, which are, I guess, a little bit narrower, but I just want to pull this thing apart, get the axle out of it, so I can take it to Butch's and match it with exactly what we need. Um, the thing with these cars is you can't just like call up Summit or Jegs and get axles. Um, you have to find some old rear end and uh, get the parts from it. So, nice. <laughs> so anyways guys um i'm gonna get to pulling this thing apart and uh hopefully butch has what we need so it's not the end of the world and my, my other friend eric has a full rear end um so i can go get the rear end from him but it's more of just the you know i have to take it all apart to take the axles out of it um this has a welded diff in here inside here there's spider gears and they're all welded up so uh you know so it has like you know it's like a spool but it's welded gear. So there's no differential basically. So both wheels spin at the same time. So if you like go around a corner, you know, kind of like, burp, burp, burp. I just stepped in muck. Anyways, um, so yeah, having the welded diff works really good on the beach because both wheels spin at the same time. If you only had one wheel spinning, you're not really gonna go anywhere in the sand. So, uh, so I welded up the diff and it's worked great. Unfortunately, that broken axle does us no good. 
So I'm gonna get the rest of it apart and see what, we, see what we're working with. So this is tapered, right? So the taper goes big to small. So normally like the drum slips onto the axle. <laughs> So I can't push the axle out this way, it needs to go that way, um, but here it's like, I don't know man. So with the keyway broken and twisted, it's going to be uh, kind of a pain in the butt to get this axle out of here. But I think I can just take it over to the press and just pop it out, so let's see what we can do. Son of a bitch, it broke my drum. I wasn't thinking, I probably should have put something on the hub. So stupid, fuck. <laughs> See what I did? I bent the shit out of the, the drum because the hub just sticks in there and it kind of like from the factory, there's like a little weld around the edge, but I bent the heck out of it. So that kind of sucks. Man, that's a lot of pressure. <sighs> Yeah, so if you look, the axle key is totally sheared. And it's in there. I don't know if you can see in there, but. Uh, well, that kind of stinks. Um, I guess first things first. All right, so this is my ghetto way of uh, Fixing my drum. Watch your toes. So it's close. It's just sheet metal, and then when I get it close, what happens is this goes on the, you know, on the outside, um, and then the wheel kind of goes to that, to the uh, to the wheel studs here. So what happens is. When it gets tightened down, it's gonna squish everything together. And it should be, for the most part, pretty true. But, we'll see. Right. Looks pretty good. All right, cool. I just gotta squish that down and put some tacks on it for the backside. First, I gotta get that axle key out of there. I guess I could, well, while I'm out, I'll probably take the wheel bearing out and clean it and then re-grease it. I'm trying to do this one-handed so I can film it like an idiot. Nobody, you guys don't care. You get the idea. I'm getting it out, but I'm not gonna do it one-handed anymore. All right, pretty much all day, I have been trying to get my broken axle out. Um, the actual, the side that was sheared kind of came right out, you know, on the press or whatever. But uh, this side is much more difficult to come off. So the, there's, this is like a tapered shaft with a keyway, so, you know, obviously like the other side, but obviously I can't put this in the press. So I have you know, a couple different pullers. So there's that puller, there's that puller, like this one, this one here like grabs onto here, and then that one grabs onto the lug nuts. 
or grabs it onto the wheel studs. But this is the hub, so I just cut the drum off to access this a little bit better. And really what I'm doing is uh, just cutting this apart and seeing if I can split it off here in order to get this off to get it out. I mean, I have another drum. The backing plate's all right, so the drum is gonna have the hub in it. Um, it's just been like a nightmare. Literally, I've been screwing with this thing since seven o'clock this morning. And Timmy's leaving, so it's five o'clock right now. Um, I did go to lunch for an hour, but I've been messing with this thing all day. It's the most frustrating thing. It's like, I don't know. I've had these be difficult to come apart, but never this difficult. This is like the worst. So I'm sure it'll come apart, but uh, gosh, it's been like all damn day. I'll get it. It's pretty fucking stupid. I'll tell yeah. you what. I'll tell you what. Yeah, the whole thing's bent out of whack too, I can see. Bearings are good. Huh. Are they? Well, the problem are now, they? so the, I guess my issue is this. Once I get this off, the keyway or the taper still goes like in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, just because I get this off doesn't necessarily mean it's you know, I mean, there's not even, to be honest, there's not a whole lot of galling in here. The yeah. galling is, I think... Are you uh, trying to save the axle? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh? This, you mean? The, the housing? No. The axle? Yeah. No, no, there's no there's no axle to save. I have new axles. So... The, I already cut the... I already cut the... Cut it off. <clears throat> what? I'll we'll just, just take the plasma cutter right, and just go... Right through there. Because that's where the wheel bearing is. You're trying to say wheel bearing? No, I can't. I just can't get. Like it sounds easy to like. Yeah, just you put the plasma cutter in there and cut it out. But I'm not sure it's going to be that simple. Dude, with the amount of heat you threw out that thing, I, I don't think the bearings are good anymore. They might feel fine now, not under load. But now these bearings are good, man. Early Ford bearings. Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of play in them. Just gotta pack them with grease. It's not the play I'm concerned about, it's the fact that the ball should be tempered steel, right? And you've just heat cycled them. No, so I mean, I, I heated out impact. here, the wheel bearings in there, I don't think I got them cherry red. I probably got them pretty warm. But, I'm getting there, I'm getting close. Bonkers. I'm just yeah. gonna cut this side off more and then hammer the shit out of it some. and. happy to say I got it out. Oh my god, that was awful. I can't even believe how difficult that was to come out. That was the worst. All right, it's 514. It took me all day to get this thing out. 
Well, the good thing is it's out. Now I can pull the diff out and put new axles in it and then be then worry about what I got to do for drums tomorrow. The rest is just parts that I need to replace. Uh, excuse me, I think I might have drums. Um, if I don't, I can go steal them off Mike Macy's car. Um, I have stolen parts off Mike Macy's car in the past and uh, he thinks I've not returned them, but I returned them with better parts than I borrowed. This is for like when I went to Trog uh, on the West Coast when we went to Pismo Beach. Um, I needed some parts. Matter of fact, I needed, I needed backing plates, I think. So I took some pieces, some crappy backing plates that he had and I replaced them with backing plates that were like literally perfect. Um, and he's, he doesn't think that I replaced them with decent parts, but either way, I replaced the parts and I hope he watches this video because he's probably uh, screaming at the TV right now going, that's fucking bullshit. But it's true, I replaced them with parts that were literally ready to be chromed. They were that nice. And his parts were all pitted and nasty, so. All right, so if none of that made sense to you, um, this is the differential in an early Ford rear end. Okay, so this side was on, you know, on the left side of the car. So I couldn't get to these bolts. So basically when you take these bolts off, there's studs that go through and it separates right here. So the, the ring gear comes off and then there's like a little diff in there. And then there's, you know, obviously, so you pull this off and then you can slide this, uh, the, the axle has like a, a gear on the end of it, which meshes to the differential. I'll show you in a second. So these guys pop off. All right, so this is an early Ford axle. And that is the messed up end. So it's not rocket science to uh, go fast on the sand. The key is having both wheels spin at the same time. So you have to have a welded diff. I don't think they make like any kind of spool or anything for these rear ends. So it's easy. You just, you know, these are your spider gears. So, you know, normally it would act like a differential, but you just weld them up. So that's all, you know, welded. So I welded all in, in this. So these spider gears don't move the axle just kind of sits in there and meshes and when it spins they both have to spin at the same time not that big of a deal but if you've never welded a diff on an early ford rear it's not much different than like a later rear as far as like what you weld but that's what it looks like on the inside so um yeah i'm gonna pop this off and then pop the axle out put the new axles in and I'm probably gonna call it a night for tonight. So anyways. So these are the new axles that I got from my friend Butch. As you can see, there's like a taper and then there's a keyway right there. So what happens is on mine, um, well, the one axle totally broke right here. Uh, and then the other one, the, the keyway, the axle key broke and then like literally welded itself. So I couldn't get it off. That was the hardest thing. So I was just trying to get the hub off so I could pull this thing out. So it's been kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, I got it, thank God. This now slips through here. Eh, I should probably clean up that race. It's a little rusty, so. I was just gonna slap them in, but it only take me two seconds to clean up the races. Um, they're the same left to right, so it doesn't really matter. So this uh, goes in here like this, sits in that race. Now the welded, so this is, as you can see, see that's all welded up. That sits. Like so. Goes like 
so. And this sits like that. Now it just gets bolted together. And that's that. That's the broken one, and that's the one that wouldn't come out. These are as good as garbage. All right, that does it for today's video. I'm uh, psyched I got the rear end apart. Um, I'm happy I got new axles in it. And now tomorrow I get to hopefully find some brake drums. I think I have some, but I don't know. It's That's like the, the, the curse of having a shop like mine is I don't know where stuff is like it's you know I have this big huge shop and I get all these parts and you know I kind of have a spot for stuff but you know sometimes it's like oh did I use that on another project or you know do I even have that do I think I have it and I not have it so anyways <clears throat> I'm gonna check uh, I have to go over to my storage and look around I think I have some stuff over there but um, I'm super excited that I finally got that rear end apart oh, I was literally thinking like what am I gonna like I, I I wasn't even thinking I didn't know what to think I mean you can ask the guys in the shop like I, I said to them I don't know what I'm gonna do like you know I could put another rear end in the car like I have another rear but like it's not that simple like that rear would still need to come apart i would then need to weld the diff in it um i would then need to make the mounts to mount it to the car and it's just like you know i know everything in that car works really well together so i'd, I'd hate to risk like i don't know just it sounds simple to just ah, pop another rear in the car i just don't want to do that so um now i just got to find some brake drums hopefully al or one of the other dudes in the area that has early Ford stuff might have some rear brake drums that I could buy from them. And if they don't, I'll figure something out. <laughs> but uh, this is, goes right back to that whole like, oh, I'll drive three hours if I have to to get some brake drums. So I know that they're available. Like people have them. It's not like, you know, total hen's teeth. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know who's got what. So chances are I'll be able to find some brake drums tomorrow, get that thing back together. And then, uh, I don't know, just some things I need to button up before race the gentleman, but that's gonna like be here before you know it. I'm planning on leaving Thursday, today's Monday. So, um, you know, I have like tomorrow basically to like get the thing buttoned up. Cause I don't wanna be like, you know, working on the car Wednesday night, knowing I have to like load the trailer. Like I wanna like chill. I wanna like load the trailer on Wednesday and just have everything that I need and not be stressing. That's never happened, because I don't work on this car ever. I just wait until the week before the race, like always, and then work on it. So I do think I'm a little bit better off now than I have been in previous years, just because um, you know I know the car runs, I know the car has a cooling system that works, um, you know, I know I have axles, I just need brake drums, and that's pretty much it. So that shouldn't be that big of a deal. So I, last night I got the, the diff and the axles all together. Um, today I just need to put the rear end together um, as far as like putting the axles in and, and kind of, you know, putting the, the axle tubes on and so on and so forth. And then I can um, do that this morning, bolt it in the car. Then I need to find some brake drums. Um, I, think, uh, I think I might have some, but if I don't, I'll have to uh, reach out to some friends who probably have some. Um, it's not the kind of thing that you can just get like at Advanced Auto Parts or Napa or something like that. Um, it's uh, all this stuff is kind of like if you don't have it, you know, you have to find somebody that does because it's not really available. There's no like you can't buy new 40 Ford axles or you know 47 Ford axles or whatever um, so anyways that's what I'm doing today uh, hopefully I can get the car all together because I have a lot to do um, I really want to once I get that all together I want to work on the e-brake so it has a, the car has a handbrake in it and where it's mounted where I sit it's kind of like you know when I pull it back I can't pull it back far enough because like the seats right there and the back of the car is right there so I want to do something to maybe modify the you know the 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 brake handle 
uh, with just how I pull it so I can get more throw or more engagement on it and make the brakes work better because that has always been something that has not worked well in that car at all. It only has rear brakes and those brakes are not that good. So when I pull it, it doesn't like, I can't like lock up the wheels. I literally have to like, you know, it just slows down. So what I usually have to do is like kind of turn and scrub speed to try to like get the car a little bit, you know, sort of sideways or push it off into like the soft sand which is not something that's uh it's not that safe and uh i don't want to have to deal with it literally at the starting line you know i know i'm gonna win the race but i'm always thinking like all right how am i gonna stop this thing like i'm thinking that before i even race so that's not something i need to be concerned with um especially if i can address it now it's only been whatever it's been five four or five years that that car's been together and i'm just addressing it now two days before i'm leaving um but that is that, so check out what I got going on. Hopefully uh, you'll like the video, see ya. All right, so what started as just taking the rear end apart and putting an axle in it, or you know, axles in it, has turned into me deciding I wanna change the clutch. Um, we put this center force clutch in here, and uh, what's happening is we think that the clutch I'm on, this is my hold music, by the way. I'm not listening to whatever this is. But anyways, we think that the uh, the uh, throw out fork, um, we think this clutch is too short. So meaning that the throw out fork is instead of like this and then pushing on the throw out bearing from here, the throw out fork is already like this, meaning like the only clutch engagement is this little tiny amount. Um, to engage the clutch, meaning it doesn't have any like drag or, you know, when you like let the clutch out, it's not smooth. It doesn't like let out. It's literally just like on or off. So it makes it really difficult to drive. Um, I kind of think that that is why the axles broke because it was such like a shock to the drive line every time you let the clutch out. And then it, like if you did that on pavement or whatever, you know, it's literally just like bang. And like every single time you let the clutch out, it was like literally like you were just dropping the clutch. So that's what I'm working on right now. I figured I could put the rear in it knowing that this clutch works kind of funny. Um, Center Force is a great company, but this clutch just uh, doesn't, the engagement is kind of wrong for this application. So I'm gonna put a stock clutch back in it and you know, while we found there was some heat in it and it wore pretty good, um, it's launching on sand. So I'm not really concerned with how much grab it has because it's, the clutch isn't gonna be slipping because it's just gonna spin on the sand. So it's not that big of a deal, um, but it's something I want to uh, put back in the car. It's just a stock clutch just because it'll make, the dri make driving so much easier. And then also just the, you know, the concern with the shock on the drive line. You know, this early Ford stuff isn't that strong and you know, it's having a clutch that operates like a light switch certainly doesn't help it. So uh, anyways, this car is supposed to be in the trailer. Let me turn, the, turn this down a little bit. So anyways, the car is supposed to be in the trailer tomorrow. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of parts all over the place and uh, that's what we're working with. So. I'm gonna get the pan, I gotta drop the oil pan. Oh, I'm still on hold. Um, just calling the electric company. I have a couple questions, but um, in order to get the clutch out, the factory original style clutch is kind of like a triangle where this is round. So in order to get this clutch out, I have to drop the oil pan in order to get the clutch to clear, you know, this lip here, which kind of sucks. Um, I'll show you the factory, <clears throat> the original style clutch is uh, is like this. So, see that's like a triangle. So you can kind of turn the clutch and like clock it in order to get it out of there. That center force does not allow that. So unfortunately I gotta drop the pan to put that clutch in. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Also kind of sucks because typically we um, alloys balances the rotating assembly so he'll put the clutch in and then and then balance everything and then mark it so we're not going to have a balanced clutch um but i just think it's still going to be easier to drive with that original style clutch so that's what i'm doing it's uh 7 45 on tuesday night the car needs to be in the trailer 
this time tomorrow night so we can leave Thursday morning. So I still have to get brake drums because I don't have brake drums and you know, I don't know. I'm a little bit, uh, <coughs> a little bit concerned, but you know, that's what had to happen. This is one of the rear brake drums. There's the rear hub and then the drum was attached to it. I just cut it off, but that's what it took to get this left side out. It's uh, it was kind of a mission, but um, you know, with today I put, you know, when I had to heat everything up so much to get it apart, I cooked all the seals, which means, you know, I had to put new seals in it. So it's just, I mean, it's all these little things that are kind of like adding up to a lot of things. So the good thing is, while it looks like there's a ton to put the car back together, it's not that big of a deal. So um, I just need to be optimistic that everything's gonna work. I don't have a clutch uh, alignment tool for this size clutch. Like I don't have a transmission output shaft or whatever. So I gotta borrow one from Al. So that means I gotta drive over to Al's to do that. I'm not gonna do that tonight. My goal tonight is to just drop the pan and get this clutch off and then maybe put the pan back on and then tomorrow morning, put the new clutch on, put the transmission on, put the rear end on, find some brake drums, and then put the whole back of the car back on, put the radiator back in it, bleed the system, which isn't that big of a deal. Um, so I got a lot to do, but I guess, uh, I don't know, that's kind of it. I do also want to play with the, the brakes, which I haven't done yet. So um, I don't know, that's kind of it. Sorry if I'm, a bit of a scatterbrain. I've, I'm like, unreal, really unsure. <laughs> I have a lot to do and uh, not that much time. So, literally, I just said it's not that big of a deal, but it is kind of a big deal. I'm kind of like stressing a little bit. So, anyways, um, I'm probably not going to film a whole lot while I'm working on this thing because it just slows me up to like have to position the camera and turn it on and make sure there's a good angle or whatever. But it's it's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I thought my thought my customer service person was on the phone, but it's not. Anyways, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep watching. So I only have this Mickey Mouse, like I don't know, twelve dollar universal clutch centering tool, which uh, you know this kind of goes in there, and then this there's different ends or whatever that go into the to the pilot bearing um we'll see i don't know hopefully it works all right guys it is a little after midnight transmission is in my alarm beeps every few seconds after six o'clock to tell me that it's six o'clock and that's like time to go home and the thing has been beeping for six hours every whatever 30 seconds <laughs> so um Pan, oil pan is back in, transmission is back in, clutch linkage and all my shift linkage is all back together. Um, I'm literally just tightening up all the shift linkage and tightening up the transmission mount. And then I think at that point, um, I don't know, the rear end, geez, I'm still this up. the rear end is built and ready to go. I don't have brake drums. I do have new axle keys, um, so that can pretty much just go on. And then really all I need to do is put some brake drums on it and then put the wheels on it. Um, put the radiator on, put the turtle deck on, and then that's kind of it. So um, uh, I'm feeling pretty good about having this car finished up. Um, I knew it wasn't gonna be that big of a deal, but it has been stressful because nothing has gone right. Um, Everything I've been touching on this car has just been like fighting me and that's never been the case It's just like how it's been going. I don't know for the past Week or so. I mean my drift car is Ready to go um, I went to tune it and we had an issue with the uh, with the computer um, We put the wrong injectors in it and they messed up the drivers that control the in the computer that control the injector. So having an issue with that, a computer sent out waiting for a new computer to come back. With this car, it was, you know, the I just figured it was gonna be quick to, you know, pull the rear apart and put new axles in it, but it took me like a whole day to get the axle, you know, to get this drum off so I could then pull the axles apart. So it's just been a struggle for sure. Here's my alarm 
<laughs> so uh, anyways, I'm excited because it's finally taking shape and it's finally looking like something and I'm not really concerned about, um, you know, if I'm gonna like have to work all night tomorrow night in order to get this thing in the trailer to leave Thursday morning. So a few things I wanna button up on it, but for the most part, I'm feeling pretty good. So, all right, this is my Model A hot rod. This is the first hot rod I ever built, um, Model A truck. It's chopped three inches and channeled, uh, had a flathead Ford V8 in it. I took the motor out of it to build a car for a Pismo Beach race of gentlemen in California. Uh, and then I ended up selling the car. So unfortunately, I never put a motor back in this thing. I do have a motor for it. And my plan is to put that motor in here and get it running. I mean, literally all the wiring is here. I mean, literally I got to put a battery in it, put the motor in it and you know, I'll have a running hot rod again. However, it's been sitting for a few years and I'm doing the worst thing ever right now. I'm stealing these brake drums off of it. And I told myself that I wouldn't do this, but I'm doing it because I have to my only, it's my only option right now. It's not a big deal. Obviously they're parts um, you can get these brake drums. It's not that big of a deal. So I'm just stealing these off of it and These are what's going on the race of gentlemen car Well, like everything else it's uh, it's been a bit of a mission. So when I went to use my puller to uh, To pull these drums. So not that they're like stuck on there, but the the brake shoes are like adjusted So they're kind of like I don't know a little bit like they touch the brake drum and uh, so you kind of need a puller to pull them off. It's not that easy to just undo it and pull them off. So my bolts here, these gold bolts, they were all galled up from the last time I tried to fix, you know, get the hub off or whatever. So I then had to go to the hardware store and get bolts, then go to the shop and retap my puller. So it's been a mission, like something that should have took, you know, 20 minutes has been like a couple hours. So the good thing is, these are my brake drums, which they're, uh, they're 39 Lincoln Zephyr brake drums. These are original drums, they're not repops. And uh, same with the front, this, this truck has original Lincoln Zephyr brakes on it, which are pretty sought after. So I gotta make sure that I get drums to put back on my race of gentlemen car so I can put these drums back on my hot rod and then put a motor in it. Right now it's literally just storage. Um, I do have a gas tank for it. Gas tank's right here. So I, I got it, I haven't even opened it, but that gas tank goes there. Um, the tank that was in it had a little bit of a leak. So for the most part, it's like literally put the motor in this thing, put these drums back on and I'll have a hot rod again. But for right now, I need to get the race gentleman car operational so I can put it in the trailer. All right, so the rear is back in the car, brakes are bled. Um, Matt's taking the brake lever out so we can cut it and bend it so I'll be able to have a little bit more like throw. I can't, when I sit in the car and pull the brake, I can't pull it far enough to actually like engage the brake. It literally just because of how I'm sitting in the car and where it is, it doesn't allow me to like have enough throw. So that's what's going on with that. Um, I think in a nutshell, it's just basically putting the turtle deck on, putting the radiator on, doing that and putting it in the trailer. We just have to go get some gas. real close to my back. But nuts and bolts.
thickens as we got the thing back together, drove it in the parking lot um, on E85. And you know, it fired right up. It seemed to run pretty good on E85. So I'm kind of hoping that, cool, we can just run E85 with the nozzles and everything for um, the alcohol or the methanol that it was running on when it went to, to Bonneville. So unfortunately, um, it's way too much fuel. Um, the nozzle size is just way too big for the E85. So as soon as you give it, as soon as it's under load or you give it like full throttle, it just dumps tons of fuel and just falls on its face. So we just went and uh, picked up this, the parts to put it back on gasoline, just regular gas. So it's kind of unfortunate. We were hoping to run the E85 and hoping that the alcohol setup would have just worked with the E85, but it absolutely didn't, it wasn't even close. So. While the car is pretty much back together, uh, in order to change the nozzles is kind of a pain in the butt. If you look, so these are the nozzles here and there's no way for them to like, you can't just unthread them. That doesn't, doesn't work. You know, the cylinder heads are in the way. So we have to pretty much see out, roll bar out. Um, you know, everything, this whole intake has to basically slide forward in order to come out. So. That's what we're working on right now. It's, uh, it's a little after nine o'clock and hopefully we can get this done kind of quick, but we'll see. Move this out of the way and everything slides forward. And this, these are what we have to change. So these are the nozzles. We're gonna put it on the LS. Look at it, it's already on top of me right now. <laughs> Wait, what? Get it. It's a trash can. Garbage. <laughs> well, put in the comments how long it took you to get that joke. <laughs> Henry Ford is Jesus, okay? <laughs> Welcome back to 1945 Speeding Custom. We're here at the, the Trog Open and He's going, he's going for the slot. He's going for the part nine. I don't know anything about golf. Oh yes, do we clap? Do we do a slow clap? I believe. A little tippy tap? Uh, no, uh, we're not, we're not the, uh, we're oh. kinda, something's up. I see no holes lining up. Uh, well, this evil's a foot. here is hitting. Hmm. It's like the gasket shifted. No, the gasket didn't shift. The intake needs to come these away. Which way? Towards, towards? Well, it's like, see how the nozzles are hitting the head? Well, sort of. So the thing is, these have to go in more in order to get the intake to go that way, mm -hmm. to clear here. So mm -hmm. it's really this one, this one, hey, uh, that one, and that one. I just noticed something. What? Of all of these have had screws on Some of them have grub screws. That's for clearance reasons. Crap. That's that's fucked up. Crap. So what you're saying is we gotta take them back out, take the intake back off and just swap take them. Take these out. grub screws out, put them in. <sighs> These here. Yeah, this is what happens. The later you do things. Alright. Play a lot of Minecraft. Okay. Intake's back on. Oh no. Yeah, don't drop it down the intake. With the grub screws, it just fits. Good job. Good job for noticing the grub screws. Al didn't oh, tell us about the grub screws. Yeah, thanks, Al. That feels cross-threaded. Oh, Jesus. I think I caught it before. It's actually going cross -threaded. Maybe we do the thing where we'll put in but All right. Please? Yes, please. Give me the... Shut up, bitch. All right, it took three tries to get the intake on. Basically, what happens is these guys have to be threaded in enough so the intake can go this way enough. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, that's correct. Blah, blah, blah. And in order to thread these in tight enough so it fits, you feel like you're gonna snap them off. So, again, thanks for letting us know, Al. 
we figured it out. Yeah, thanks, Al. All right, it's two o'clock in the morning. My car is in the trailer. I'm driving home. I'm gonna get a few hours of sleep, and then Jack and Matt are gonna meet me at my house, and we're gonna head to Wildwood. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna win again, and uh, stay tuned because the next videos are gonna be from Wildwood. If you're not subscribing, subscribe, hit the like button if you've been liking the videos. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks, guys.